Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Little River United Church of Christ, an open and affirming congregation. We're so glad to have all of you join us for another edition of Zoom Worship. Um, let me say a special word of welcome to all of our guests and friends we haven't seen in a long time. Um, it's a particular joy to have you join us this Sunday. A couple of announcements for us. Um, today we'll be continuing on with our Good Neighbors Preaching Together series. We're going to hear a word from Reverend Leah Davis of Ravensworth Baptist Church. And given everything that's happened in our country this week, um, we did talk about whether it would be best for each of the pastors to say a word to their own congregations today. But the whole point of this series is to really show each other that we are one body in Christ. So we are continuing with that today. Um, so we will be led in worship by Reverend Davis from Ravensworth Baptist, but also joined in spirit uh, with John Calvin Presbyterian Church and Peace Lutheran Church as well. So we give thanks for that. Also today, we will be welcoming a new member to our congregation, Carter Wilbur. Uh, many of you know Carter because he has been a part of this congregation for some time, but we are making it official today, so we give thanks for that. Right after worship, um, as usual, we will have our coffee hour, but we really want to create some space in coffee hour to discuss and process the events of this week. We haven't had an opportunity to do that as Little River yet, so if you would like to share your thoughts and feelings and just be with folks uh, today and talk about that, please do stick around for coffee hour. Next Sunday, uh, January 17th, we will welcome our interim senior pastor, Art Cribbs. Um, Art begins his tenure with us uh, the next Sunday and he will be preaching. That is also Martin Luther King weekend. We'll have some other things to announce, but we give thanks uh, that Pastor Art is on his way to Virginia. And then finally, I encourage everyone to save the date for January 31st. That is our annual congregational meeting, um, which is our main business meeting of the church year. And we would like to have as many members join that as possible. That will take place during our coffee hour right after worship. So please uh, save the date on your calendar now. With that, friends, there's much more you can read about in our bulletin, but for right now, I would like to invite our liturgist, Janet Mackey, to lead us in our call to worship. The reign of God is drawing near. The prophet calls us to change our lives. Prepare the way for the Lord a just and peaceful path. Welcome one another, for Christ welcomes you. For the glory of God, let us worship as one. <clears throat> Oh, 
let us pray. Holy God, we long for your peace. We trust in your promise. We hear your call to turn toward you, to change our lives and welcome you in. Meet us here and fill our minds with your wisdom and our hearts with your peace that our worship together may open us to the challenge of your dream of wholeness for all. In the name of the one who is coming, we pray, amen. Friends, it is our great joy this morning to be welcoming a new member to Little River United Church of Christ. And I would like to introduce Carter Wilbur now. Carter is known to many of you, but um, Carter, please just share a word on what brings you to membership at Little River at this moment. You can unmute and share with us. 
Well, good morning. Um, it's uh, really been something that I kind of thought I was a member. I've always felt like a member. Um, so it's just, uh, you know, making making official what to me has always been true. Well, I think that we feel the same way and we are glad to be making it official this morning. Um, I invite everyone to follow along with our litany of reception, but to begin, I will read our United Church of Christ statement of faith. Hear these words. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, and to you, to your deeds, we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death, and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, to resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm to which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Drew Nettinga, our chair of our deacons board, and Carter to join me in this litany of reception. The church is a family of people with varieties of gifts united by the spirit revealed in Jesus of Nazareth. We rejoice that the spirit has led you here and you have chosen to become a member of Little River United Church of Christ. It is in the spirit of caring for one another, forgiving and helping each other that we gather here today. It is the spirit of love revealed in the life and death of Jesus Christ, that web that we invite you to join this community of faith. I want to share in that spirit. The church is a family of people with a diversity of needs, ideas, and visions inspired by the Holy Spirit, made known through the words and deeds of Jesus as recorded in scripture. Will you join us, Carter, with us to further God's work and reflect the teachings of Jesus by standing in the spirit of justice and peace? I want to share in that spirit. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the church. We rejoice in your journey of faith, which has brought you here, and we give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home. Grateful for your faithful witness, I promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God, supporting the ministries of this church, and giving of my time, talents, and resources in service of this community and God's work in the world. We are thankful for you, Carter, and we welcome you into the life and membership of this church. We pledge to you our love and our prayers as our lives are bound together into God through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Carter, it is our joy to receive you as a member today. 
Welcome officially to Little River United Church of Christ. Friends, let us pray our prayer for illumination. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us as we read these scriptures together. Come bring your understanding and reveal your truth. Come open our minds, hearts, and souls to all that these words of life offer us. We long to be continually challenged, transformed, and renewed by your word. Draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, our scripture and sermon this morning will be given by the Reverend Leah Grunset Davis, pastor of Ravensworth Baptist Church. Here are these words from the Gospel of Mark. Good morning. Hear these words from the Gospel of Mark. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him, John the Baptist, in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he came up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. It's a special morning when I get to say good morning to beloveds at John Calvin Presbyterian Church, Little River UCC, Peace Lutheran Church, and Ravensworth Baptist Church, and anyone else who's joining us online this morning. My name is Leah Grunset Davis. I'm the pastor at Ravensworth, and it is lovely to be with all of you today. Our churches have a wonderful partnership with the Homework Club and with ACCA and in so many other ways, in relationship and in vision and in love. I'm grateful to each of your pastors who are dear friends and colleagues, and I'm grateful to each of you and this good gospel work we undertake together as the people of God in this time and this place. And I'm especially grateful this week, given the state of our country in the DC area, that our churches believe in partnerships that work for justice and sharing God's love. Our strength and partnership will be even more critical in the coming days. One of the beautiful parts about our churches coming together this morning is that we are committed to life together, to working to create beloved community right where we live, even when the forces around us are working to destroy it. 
On Wednesday, we celebrated the day of Epiphany, the day we remember the wise men who chose to follow the way of truth and peace toward the Christ child, instead of the whims and demands of the tyrant Herod who wanted death for anyone who threatened his power. It was quite the reality to be observing that holy day of wonder and light shining as we witnessed rioters storm the Capitol building to disrupt the work of Congress and our democratic elections. The devotion to Christian nationalism and white supremacy was on full display. We saw nooses on the lawn, violence in the streets, and death in the Capitol building. As Reverend T. Denise Anderson said, this happened on Epiphany. Indeed, a light is shining on us and revealing who we are. I hope folks get it now. So how can we be wise in the midst of what we have witnessed? I'm certain it doesn't look like following the whims of any ruler that is only about unjust power and control. There is always another choice. We can always choose to go home by another way, like the wise men did and be transformed by an encounter with Jesus. In our text from Mark this morning, we left toddler Jesus and the wise men in the Gospel of Matthew and abruptly meet the fully grown man Jesus in his fourth decade of life in this Gospel of Mark. Our church year continues to unfold on this, the baptism of our Lord Sunday. Our turn to the Gospel of Mark is abrupt. Just like Mark. Mark was meant to be read aloud. And in some ways it reads like a play. The audience or the reader gets special information and we quickly learn that God is the main player. And Mark is, well, special. There's no baby Jesus, no star, angels, no wise men. No songs or lullabies or protests and no mention of Mary, Joseph, Zachariah, or Elizabeth. Mark is on a mission, and it is to tell the story of God blessing the earth with love in the form of Jesus. Mark's our earliest gospel that we have, and the best guess is it was written sometime around 70 AD. That's only a few decades after Jesus' death. And he was writing to fear-filled followers of Jesus. The people who knew Jesus firsthand have mostly died by this point. And they thought he was going to come back, and he hadn't. He was writing to a group of Jesus followers who needed to be reminded that God is still breaking into the world in the same way God had with prophets of old and with Jesus and with them. Sounds like something we might need to hear too. The gospel in its entirety presents a promise a covenant to what life with God looks like, disruptive and hopeful and full of love. Mark's gospel is laced with a sense of urgency and immediacy and action. Jesus was making moves and performing miracles. Mark begins with the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This is the beginning of Mark's story of an invasion of God in the world. As we travel later into Mark this year with the lectionary, commentator Richard Boyce points out that we'll see that this is an invasion that neither expects nor requires any real receptivity on the part of those for whom is receiving it. The whole gospel makes it clear that nobody gets it with the exception of the demons and the centurion. But it doesn't matter, because God is the one acting in the world. Mark introduced his interpretation of the good news with the quote from the prophet Isaiah. The messenger was coming before, and this messenger happened to be the rough-and-tumble cousin of Jesus. With Isaiah guiding us, reminding us of the covenants made to the people so many years before. This morning, we wade into that water with all the people and Jesus. The people were in the water for baptism, with the feeling of cleansing and renewal washing over them. 
As they each waded in, they told John the Baptist their sins and that the promise of peace, he baptized them, offering a promise of peace in this coming kingdom of God. But after the people came up out of the water, maybe they did a double take at the camel hair covered John the Baptist and they got a whiff of honey from his beard and heard the sweet words that he said to them. The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with Holy Spirit. And in those days, while the group gathered by the river, Jesus came from Nazareth and was baptized by his cousin John. He stood with the others that day, those who had come seeking a restart. All their toes got sandy and muddy as they approached the riverbed. Their stomachs maybe flip-flopped a little bit as they got closer to be their turn because John the Baptist was out there, and who was he anyway? When it came to be Jesus' turn, he walked out. Maybe he hugged his cousin and told John he wanted to be baptized. And John lowered him into the water, and Jesus came up out of the murky water and looked up. With water dripping from his face and his beard, he saw the heavens torn apart, the spirit descending like a dove on him, and heard a voice that came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved and with you I am well pleased. What a baptism. Getting into the theatrics of Mark again, he only tells us that Jesus saw and heard these things. As the Spirit of God landed on him like a dove, he saw the heavens torn open and heard from his Creator that he was beloved and that God was well pleased with him. Mark does some good foreshadowing here. It won't be the last time the heavens are torn open in this gospel when Jesus is concerned. This baptismal covenant, the words that come to Jesus from God, come to all of us as a way to understand how God saw him and indeed how God sees all of us. We aren't Jesus. <laughs> Let's be clear about that. But when we see the heavens open and the Spirit of God coming at us in full force in our lives, we too know that we are God's beloved and that Holy Spirit is at work. John the Baptist baptized Jesus on that day 2,000 years ago, and Jesus heard from God that he was beloved. The heavens were torn apart. There could no longer be separation from the love of God as it was understood. In this moment, the world was disrupted with the radical inbreaking of God's love. It wasn't the only time, but it was one of the times. And it was disruptive. And it was identity claiming for Jesus. It was God transcending space and time because someone needed to hear they were beloved. I'm sure you can guess where this is going. What I invite us to do this morning is to practice what happened that day in our world. To claim and live that you are the beloved of God and then claiming and living like everyone else is too. Proclaiming that everyone is beloved by God is a radical statement to make because it makes our belovedness our common core truth. Humans, like Herod, like politicians, and ourselves, if we're being honest, attempt control and work to create systems and structures that try to keep the heavens closed from this belovedness. But God has never been about that. God has always been about tearing apart the heavens so that belovedness could rain down. When we perpetuate these systems, and in the case of what happened this last week, the sin-filled systems of white supremacy and Christian nationalism, whether as white people or institutions, we deny people's belovedness. There was an Instagram post on overcoming racism I saw on Thursday morning. It said, 
Stop comparing the insurrection at the Capitol to Black Lives Matter. Instead, compare the insurrection to when white Americans beat and brutalize black people at lunch counters, lynched black people for registering to vote, bombed buses and chur churches, murdering children for the purpose of maintaining Jim Crow. What is happening at the Capitol was the same thing we've seen happen throughout history when white Americans fear the loosening grip of white supremacy in this nation. If you must compare events, compare white rage with white rage and dismantle it. If we believe in the baptismal promises we make, and the power of Holy Spirit at work in the world, we must be about working to live in beloved community. If we believe that we are beloved by God, and everyone else is too, acting and living any other way is just not compatible with who we know Jesus to be. It might feel vulnerable and disruptive to bring belovedness to the forefront of our relationships in our world, but it's the only way to live as we follow Jesus and live together in community. Because it tears apart the heavens and the love of God rains down on everyone. So as you go about your day today and in the days to come, as we witness chaos and strife, may you remember every time you touch water. May you remember the baptism of Jesus and this invitation into covenantal life together and that you are God's beloved, just like everyone else. We are good neighbors proclaiming the gospel together. And this is good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, we come now to our time of offering. If you would like to make a gift to Little River UCC, you can do so in a number of ways. You can mail a check to the church but I encourage you to visit us online. If you click on our donate online page on our website, it'll take you to an interface that looks like this where you can enter an amount for your pledge to our operating fund or any one of our special offerings. We give thanks for all of the gifts that we bring to this place and for the blessings that will be made possible with this offering. We give God thanks and praise. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. This morning, I would like to share a prayer written by Laura Martin, the associate pastor at Rock Spring UCC. She gave me her permission to share this prayer. Um, she calls it Prayer for Today. O oh, Holy One, we are your people, your people who lament, your people who carry hot anger, your people who hold grief close on our chests, your people who are afraid, your people who are exhausted. Oh God, we watched people who carried out terrorism and insurrection on Wednesday, also carry signs proclaiming the name of Jesus, hold signs that quoted scripture or said that you were on their side, we unite today to say that anything that equates faith or true religion with hatred, violence, terrorism cannot stand. We unite together to proclaim that our faith tells us to dismantle white supremacy and not pray to it. 
We do not know what is next for this nation, but we know that you tell us in holy stories and all of our traditions to pursue justice, to work for the good, to feel afraid, but to not let that fear keep us from courage. You tell us that when we are tired, we can rest in you and then continue. You tell us that we can believe in a way that we have only seen in hints and glimpses on earth and that goodness is stronger than evil. You tell us that ours is the long road, but one always worth walking with you. And you tell us that in the end, even after destruction, that faith, hope, and love remain. And the greatest of these is always, always the love. Amen. Now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, go now and live in the spirit of your baptism, even when you are led into wild and harsh places. 
with repentance and trust, give yourselves to God and strengthen yourselves against the ways of evil. As you go forth today, may God be beside you in times of struggle and may the Holy Spirit guide you back to the path whenever you stray. Go now in peace. Amen. Oh.